This lesson is about understanding the system and the structure of a process FMEA. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. At the end, you should know the different items of an FMEA with which a process is being analyzed. And you should know how these elements relate to each other in the FMEA form. This lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we look at the system with which an FMEA is set up. We discuss system elements, functions, characteristics and potential failures. The actual FMEA form is then created in the second chapter. Let's start with the systematic structure of the process FMEA and the explanation of how the individual elements are related to each other. The creation of an FMEA is divided into seven steps. Firstly, the planning and preparation during which, among other things, the scope and the limits of the FMEA are determined. More on that in an example. Secondly, the structural analysis, followed by the functional and failure analysis. In steps 5 and 6, follow the risk analysis and the optimization with the status of recommended actions. At the end comes the results documentation. Steps 5 to 7 with the risk analysis and evaluation of the failures and the status of the recommended actions to mitigate risks are the content of a separate lesson. At the beginning of an FMEA, the scope and limits must be defined. As an example, let's take a look at this bracket for a seatbelt buckle in a car. So the assembly bracket is the system element that we will focus on. This makes it clear that we will not be looking at the seatbelt system or even the entire vehicle. However, the bracket as an assembly is part of a product. It is also clear that there must be an interface between the bracket and the product of which this assembly is a part of. At this interface, the process FMEA must be aligned with the FMEA of the higher level assembly or the end product. A system element below the bracket would be the riveting process step. Below this system element would then come the various process elements such as the machine, the method, the human, the measurement or the environment, also known as the 5M. Next, we will see how these system elements are linked. As has just happened, relevant system elements must be defined. For this purpose, a structural analysis is carried out. This already results in a hierarchy. These system elements are numbered consecutively and then linked together in a structure net or structure tree. Typical system elements for our example would be the bracket, the rivet, the riveting process and the 5M – machine, human, method, measurement and the environment. These system elements can then be linked together in a structure tree and displayed graphically. Schematically shown here below on the right. In the middle is the system element riveting process. To the left of this is the system element bracket. On the right hand side one would find the aforementioned 5M among others. These structure trees can become very complex. Therefore suitable software is usually used here. Functions and or characteristics are then assigned to these system elements. Typical functions here would be for example 
Carry out an inspection of the incoming goods. Produce a riveted assembly. Produce a hole with a diameter D. Join parts by welding. Inspect a characteristic or carry out a final inspection. Just as the system elements were linked together in a structure net before, the various functions must now also be linked together. Since system elements not only fulfill functions, but can also have process characteristics, for example, in the form of parameters, these must also be documented and linked. A few examples of process characteristics or parameters are the pressure for an air cylinder in bar, the speed of a spindle in revolutions per minute, the feet of a tool in millimeter per minute, the traversing distance of in-feet of a device in millimeter, or the temperature of an oven in degrees centigrade and so on. As you have surely already seen, some additions have already been made on the left-hand side. Functions and parameters have been added to the system elements. Here we have already started to develop the structure of an FMEA form. This will become much clearer in a moment. Now we come to the failure modes. If we now look at the system element bracket at the top left, the effects and failure modes have already been added. These come from the product FMEA. The system element bracket has the function of connecting two parts securely and permanently. To fulfill this function, the rivet must have the correct length after riveting. This is the only way to ensure that the rivet head is not too small. A failure always has a cause. This cause can now be found in the process. An example here, we have an interface between the product FMEA and the process FMEA, which must be aligned. The reason for a braking load that is too low is a closing head that is too small. And the cause for a rivet length that is too short would be a too short travel of the head maker. The system in which the effect, failure mode and cause are linked to one another in the same as for the product FMEA. A cause of one system element becomes the failure mode of the underlying system element. Examples of failure modes in a process FMEA would be that bad or incorrect parts were accepted in goods receipt, that during assembly or manufacture characteristics do not meet the specifications or that bad parts were not detected or sorted out. The failure mode just mentioned could result in the following effects or consequences. The next process step is not possible and the production comes to a standstill. A part is missing or the function is not or only partially given. Customer complaints or even violations of the law can also be the results and so on. Even if we have already mentioned the four causes of failures in the FMEA, here are a few more examples. The process is not capable or controlled. Human mistake or poorly or untrained staff. Wear and tear on machines, tools or devices. No process control established or even misuse such as willful damage or circumventing of quality assurance measures. With the further addition of the errors for the machine, the complete systematic of the failures in the system elements becomes even clearer. Within a system element, we find the cause of the failure on the right, then the failure mode in the middle and the effect or the consequence of the failure on the left. The following system is used across system elements. The effect of the lower system element becomes the failure mode 
of the system element above and this becomes the cause of the failure of the next system element above. Basically, the causes in a process FMEA can be found in one of the 5M. These are the human, the machine, the method, the milieu as a synonym for the environment or the measurement. For the machine and the person, four possible causes of failures are mentioned in the FMEA. Before we get to the next chapter, it might make sense to pause the video and internalize this system again. In this chapter, we build on the structure we have just created and use it to create the corresponding part of an FMEA form. For a better understanding, the system elements have so far been shown offset to one another. In FMEA forms, these system elements are of course not offset from one another, but are aligned linearly one below the other. So, now we are going to move each system element to the left one at a time. Now we have a classic structure as is usually found in FMEA forms. Although there are many different layouts for FMEA forms. However, we will not go into these here. It is important that you understand the system. Therefore, let us briefly recapitulate at this point. To create an FMEA, relevant system elements must be defined that are to be evaluated. Each system element can have multiple functions or characteristics, but does not have to. Not every function necessarily has to have a measurable characteristic. In any case, it is important to adhere to the system of failures and the causes and consequences. Then you can easily create such an FMEA with the help of an Excel template. Of course, special FMEA programs are more professional and have more functions. But for software-aided FMEA creation, knowledge of the previously discussed system is essential. The next step would be the evaluation of the effects, the failure modes and the causes. These are evaluated in terms of their severity, the probability of detection and the probability of their occurrence. The significance of an effect also results in a function or characteristic being classified, for example, as significant or critical. The result of this assessment is a risk priority number or an action priority. How such an FMEA form then looks, including the status of the preventive actions, is shown here. But this part is covered in a separate lesson. Before we finish, here are again the seven steps of the FMEA from the beginning of the lesson. We have discussed steps 1 to 4 in this lesson. Steps 5, 6 and 7 are the topic of a separate lesson. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the four most important key messages. Before starting the FMEA, define the scope. Define system elements, functions and characteristics and create a structure. Define failure modes, causes and effects. The system of the horizontal and vertical failure propagation must be followed. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that. Take care and see you next time. Bye.